Okay, cool. Um, so, hi everybody. Um, I'm happy to be talking about my work today called Journal uh, Nonparametric Tests of Differential um, Genomic, uh, sorry, Gene Expression for a Single Cell and Bulk Genomics. So, um, I want to start by motivating uh, this piece of work. So, as we all know, uh, differential analysis is a key component of single cell and bulk genomics. And um, there is moreover a need for general methods that um, can encode flexible alternatives um, when running a D analysis. So, for example, in a recent work by Sham et al., um, it's shown that um, changes in regu gene regulation uh, that are owing to aging or senescence, um, they're actually more likely uh, to be picked up by variability indices rather than uh, mean or median indices. And um, moreover, in the uh, bulk RNA-seq setting, um, it's also recently shown that a lot of current approaches actually have um, a uh, false discovery rate. And so there are, of course, some approaches that um, can you know, detect alternatives that are uh, characterized by uh, multimodality, but um, these methods you know, rely on parametric models typically. So given these issues, um, now you know, I would like to present this uh, a general uh, two-sample test um, to you. So um, the way I'm going to do it is to first explain how we construct our test statistic. So essentially, this um, general test is really a test on a simplex. So um, I'm going to walk you through step-by-step step how this works. So suppose you're given two samples, and these samples are labeled by, say, some condition of interest. Um, then what we do to the, the two samples is we take the smaller sample, um, so for instance, x, um, and we're going to rank the um, values of x and set the points of them as bars. And then we're going to slot the second sample's points um, in between the consecutive um, bars. So kind of looking like this. And so from this procedure, we actually get a counts vector um, uh, where we have S1 to SK plus 1 counting number of yj's that are contained between two bars. And then, um, so this counts vector actually, you know, sums to n. Um, and so we, we then have to actually uh, divide throughout by n so that we can get a vector that actually lies in the uh, simplex. So after division, we get some vector that lies in the simplex. And then finally, we construct a test statistic um, by taking some linear combination of um, the peef power of the entries of this uh, vector. So now we've seen a test statistic. What is this null distribution, right? So the null distribution is exactly when the two samples come from the same underlying distribution, right? And when this happens, um, the distribution of the normalized counts vector that I described in the previous slide is actually uniform over the simplex. And so this allows us to compute the p value um, under this uh, uniform null hypothesis. So the key insight, however, is that um, the choice of the test statistic will actually help to boost the power of the test against um, alternatives of interest to the user. So remember that the test statistic actually depends on two user-defined parameters. Uh, the weights and the exponent p. And so the generality of these choices actually will help increase the power against um, you know, uh, alternatives that are, are, uh, the user has in mind. So as two examples, uh, we know the standard Wilcoxon test, where the alternative that we have in mind is stochastic dominance. Um, we actually can use the following uh, parameterization. Um, However, if let's say we're interested in an alternative that is characterized by more of a skill shift uh, rather than stochastic dominance. So the mean or the median could be the same, but then the variance could be um, uh, shifted, for example, right? Then we would use another parameterization as, as shown in this slide. So just to reiterate this point, in general, we would have some, you know, kind of um, alternative uh, distribution shift of interest. You know, this could be, for example, um, changes in the zero inflated negative binomial dispersion parameter or some other um, uh, alternative of interest. From there, we can actually 
work out the optimal um, weights and exponent uh, of interest. And then we can then use the test um, uh, using these weights. So before I talk about some of the applications to uh, uh, single cell genomics, I would just want to point out that uh, because this test is um, non-parametric, so first of all, it does control the type 1 error. Um, and moreover, we did a um, kind of semi-synthetic, uh, we, we ran an experiment on some semi-synthetic data. We showed that it actually also controls uh, the false discovery rate. Um, and, and of course, finally, um, you know, for um, the, the choice of, of weights and exponent that, uh, that was shown on the previous slide, uh, we do show, you know, that the test actually is strictly more powerful than Man Whitney. So um, now I'm going to talk about uh, some applications to genomics, and I'm going to keep it short so that we have some time for questions. Uh, so we actually uh, ran this um, test on uh, both bulk RNA-seq as well as single-cell RNA-seq. So I'll be talking about the single-cell RNA-seq um, um, uh, application today, and we ran it on the uh, tabular mirror standard data where the uh, condition of interest is the um, age group. So very specifically, we performed DE analysis with respect to um, uh, three different age groups that were available in the uh, spleen, the kidney, and the lung tissues. And um, we, first of all, optimized the parameters for detecting a scale shift. And this is really because, um, as was mentioned in the first, uh, in the very beginning, um, you know, there are these papers that report uh, signatures of, of, of aging or senescence to be governed by um, shifts in spread rather than uh, centrality measures like the mean or the median. And on top of that, we also consider uh, multiple data normalizations. So we considered the raw counts, we considered the log counts, and then we considered also what is called uh, SE transform, or uh, the variance stabilizing transform that uh, uh, uses the Pearson residuals. So um, just to show you one uh, you know, example of a finding that we have, um, if you look at this plot over here, uh, you can see that this is a plot of um, some differentially expressed genes that were called by either running the Wilcoxon test or our test, which we call MOCHIs. Um, and um, on the x and the y axis, I'm actually plotting um, uh, uh, the full changes as well as the spread changes. So if you look at the, the red points, which are the points that are called uh, DE uh, genes uh, by running the uh, MOCHIs test, uh, which is the name of our software, um, we see that um, a lot of these genes actually are lying in uh, parts of this graph where spread changes are more extreme than the full changes. Now, if you look at the uh, blue points, however, which are the DE genes that are called uh, where we ran the Wilcoxon test, uh, you'll see that, you know, they're sort of, it's less clear. The pattern is, you know, less clear. You see that there are some genes um, that are characterized by a more extreme change in spread um, than uh, fold, but you also see some other genes that are characterized, characterized by um, more extreme changes in the fold than the spread. So um, I actually do have some more plots, um, but uh, feel free to ask me uh, questions during Q&A, I'm happy to share more plots. But um, I would like to end the presentation here by acknowledging um, the following individuals for uh, helpful discussions um, leading up to this work. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Alan. Um, just to remind everybody online, if you have any questions to please put them in the chat and we will get them up there and I can read them. Um, and at the end, we'll also walk around with microphones for people who have questions in the room. Please make sure that you also say who the question is for. Right. I see Ryan has a question about the availability of the code. So um, that's a great question. So actually, it's it's over here in this slide. Uh, here, can everyone see this? Um, so we basically um, have the package on GitHub. So right now, it's um, it's still work in progress, but uh, we have the function that actually can run the p-value computation, um, and it's 
uh, already packaged up in a tarball. Um, mm -hmm. So you can just download it and install it as an R package as you would a typical uh, R package in a tarball. Um, and um, just to show you an example of like how we can run the, 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 the main function. So over here, we actually have it documented already. Um, so it looks kind of like this. Um, so we call it the mochis test and um, you have a bunch of parameters and you can just specify the parameters of interest and here's an example of how you would run it um, on some simulated uh, two samples. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to move on to the next speaker and then we'll take all more questions at the end. Okay. Thank you, Alan. Okay.